wind of the Spirit blowing through the open window, blowing open the curtains of my heart. Holy is our God. Just go ahead and start whenever you're ready, Amy. Okay. Wow. 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 About a year ago, the Lord spoke to me. It was the time when I began to see the, the seraphim, the fire angels coming down, coming to each believer, coming to those that were open and willing to be changed, to be purified as by fire. They were sent on assignment out of heaven to prepare his bride. Hmm. I want to engage with the fire angels this morning, the seraphim that have been sent to the sons of God to do a quick work to prepare us to transform our hearts by fire. Holy fire. To burn out anything in me where the enemy has a place, a foothold, a handhold, or even a stronghold. Any part of me that is not fully possessed by the Holy Spirit. Oh. Whoa. I won't be long this morning. Let's get a couple of scriptures. Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And you. Look at somebody. Make eye contact with them. And say, and you. So we're all included. Has he quickened or made alive or enlightened, fully alive, fully enlightened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Look at somebody and say, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. <laughs> Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world. You walked according to the power of the prince of the, the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Hmm. Among whom also we all had our conversation, our lives, lifestyle, in times past. Look at your neighbor and say, that time has passed. Hmm. In the lust of our flesh. Hmm. 
How dirty were our robes before the blood. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Look at your neighbor and say, I was, but I ain't no more. I was a sinner, but now I'm a saint, and I'm a son. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he's made us alive, quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. And has raised us up together. And has made us sit together in the heavenlies, in heavenly places. Look at your neighbor and say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was a citizen of this world, but now my citizenship is in heaven. My identity used to be the old man, but my new identity is in Christ. He's raised us up together. Together. He is bringing a people together. So that one body, one new man can together gather the harvest. Together to go and gather. Together to gather I know that seems simple but it's a prophetic word this morning hmm. he's raised us up and we're seated in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus not in your own works not in your own ability not in your own doing but in his doing we now have our being. In his doing, we now have our being. Look at your neighbor and say, I am now seated in heavenly places in Christ. I am now in Christ. And Christ is in me. I live, I move, and I have my being in him and he lives and he moves and he has his being in me that why have we been forgiven why have we been changed why have we been brought in why have we been seated in the heavenlies that in the ages to come we're in an age to come. Two ages since this word was given. Two is the number of witness. Two is the house of God. The sons of God. That in the ages, the now, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Lest you should boast. For we are his workmanship. Faith confession. Say this with me. I am his workmanship. I'm your house, Lord. 
Renovate the house, Lord. Refurbish the house, Lord. Refresh the house. Renew the house. Refill the house. Take out all the old furniture and restore the furniture of heaven in my house. <laughs> Fill my house with heavenly things. <sighs> For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, with God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Oh, Jesus. Verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes afar off are brought nigh or near by the blood of Christ. For he alone is our peace, who has made both one, say one, oneness, one, 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 oneness. The elevens, the ones, all speak first of oneness. And has broken down the wall of partition or separation between us. Jesus has broken down the wall. There's no more distance. No more delay. No more denying. He's abolished it in his flesh. The enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances. For to make in himself of two, one new man. So making peace. Perfect oneness. That he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. Having slain that enmity thereby. And he came and he preached peace to you. Who were afar off and to them that were near. For through him. Through who? Jesus we both have access we both have access we both have access by one spirit unto the father you have access to the father not just the spirit not just the Son. We have access to the Father. Wow. Many see Jesus. Many have the Spirit. But we are moving into a greater dimension of glory. Because we have access to the Father of all glory. We have access to the creator of all things. The Spirit and the Son, they say, come. Come to the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but your fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You're in the household, the family of God. Your order has been changed. Your nature has been changed. Your life has been changed. You've been brought into a new family. A heavenly family. A heavenly father. A heavenly mother. And are built upon. It's plural. We are all built upon 
the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. The apostles and the prophets. The two have become one. Do we understand he's talking about the old covenant and the new covenant? The prophets all through the Old Testament. The apostles establishing the new covenant in the earth. The 12 tribes, the 12 apostles, the 12 pillars of the church. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building means all of us. I'm, I'm telling you, there's a word in this about together. We gather. We got to come together in order to gather. You got to find your people. You got to find your tribe. You got to find your identity. You got to find your family. The Bible says he takes the solitary and does what? Sets them in families. The enemy does what? Comes to divide. The enemy comes to deceive and divide. But Jesus came. To do away with that. To lead us and guide us into the truth. And he is the truth. Truth is a person. You have to have relationship with the person. In whom all the building is fitly framed together. Joint to joint. Joints of supply. The church is so divided and so fragmented. Jesus came for us to be one. For us to be fitly framed together. Like the boards of the tabernacle, of the temple. Solomon's temple was built with tongue and groove boards. We are meant to be joined together. To be united together. United we stand, divided we fall. The enemy comes to deceive and divide. But the Spirit, the Lord Jesus, has come to lead and guide and unite us as one. And when we do that, we grow unto a holy temple in the Lord. Hmm. You can't do it alone. You can't do it on our, we can't do it on our own. I can have a relationship with him and I can go to heaven. But I cannot establish on earth the kingdom alone. He ordained it. It is written. In whom all the building fit, fitly framed together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. And this is the verse the Lord spoke to me during worship. In whom... Who? Those that have been fitly framed together and grow together as a temple unto the Lord. You're the dwelling place. You're the temple. Together we make up the church, the ecclesia, his governmental body in the earth. In whom you also are builded together. Builded together. Builded together. We have to allow the Spirit to build us together. The only way I can fulfill all that's on my destiny's grow is if I allow the Spirit to build me together with others, with those that I am called to, that my name is written on their scroll and their name is written upon my scroll. 
We have to know where we're supposed to be. We have to know who we're supposed to be with. We have to know who are we supposed to be building together with. You can't live outside of his will. You can't water this down. You can't change this to fit your lifestyle. He's not going to change his word because we've got some insecurities. Because we've got some issues. The word is true. And his word endures forever. Amen. In whom you also, say, look at your name and say, you also are builded together for a habitation. That's the word. Habitation of God through the Spirit. A habitation of the Father, the fullness of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The fullness of the Father. I want the fullness of the Father. I want my full inheritance from my Father. And you can't get it alone. Unless we're willing to be builded together, you will only have a part, a partial, a small portion. I want the double portion. I want the fullness. I want all of it. I don't want to pick and choose out of the kingdom what I'll have and what I won't have. It's not my right to make that decision because I'm a servant. I've given my life to him. He owns my life, not me. I've surrendered my will for his will to be done in me and through me. A habitation of God. That word habitation in the Greek here means a dwelling place. It means to settle in. The root means his divine power and influence. To govern it. See, we want God to establish his government. We want to establish the kingdom. But it's first got to be established in you and over you. To dwell in. To dwell in the temple. To always pre be present for worship. To be always present for worshipers. Who are those worshipers? The ecclesia and the angels. The host of heaven. And the host on earth that are called by his name. The root word means to house permanently. To reside in. One more verse. It's in Exodus chapter 15. Verse 1 and 2. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel. This is when he delivered them out of Egypt. This song unto the Lord and spake saying, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. Hmm. Verse 2 is, is the meat. See, Israel came out of Egypt. It's a picture of salvation. You were delivered and set free. He brought you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his marvelous light, the kingdom of his dear son. Israel came out of Egypt and then what? They disobeyed God. That generation wouldn't go any farther. 
They were happy to come out of Egypt, but they weren't happy to come into the promises, the fullness, their inheritance. And every generation since then has been guilty of that same mistake, that same unwillingness, the same sin. It's a sin of refusing to surrender our will fully to him. The sin of refusing to give up all of your rights for his righteousness. See, when you keep your rights, you're saying, my righteousness is enough. It's good enough. Every man is right in his own eyes. But are we right in the eyes of God? Are you being builded together? Or are you separate? The enemy wants to separate us. The enemy wants to divide us. Do we understand why? Because the fullness of the demonstration of his spirit power, the fullness of his kingdom, the fullness of his government will not be seen. As long as we're divided, as long as we're separated, as long as we still hold on to our rights and our wills, you have to fully surrender all spirit, soul, and body. We have to walk in the full revelation that I am not my own. But I am owned by him. I am his possession. I am his property. I am his bond slave. I am his servant. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him. A habitation. Moses declaring the word of the Lord to Israel. As a forerunner. As a leader. Moses was declaring to Israel. And to the whole of creation. Into this realm. What the Father had written in heaven. Not only was he the deliverer. That brought them out of Egypt. Brought them through the Red Sea. Crushed their enemies behind them. But he was the God that was in front of them. To lead them by cloud and fire by night. To lead them and guide them. To bring them into the fullness of their inheritance. To bring them in to the fullness of the promises. Every prophetic promise of God for his people. He declared, He is our salvation. He is our God. And I will prepare Him a habitation. My Father's God. And I will exalt Him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is His name. That word for Lord there is not Adonai. It's not Elohim. It's not about his provision. It's not about his powers. The word is yod Hey vav Hey. Yahweh. Aleph. The great ox. First letter in the Hebrew alphabet is Aleph. Hear me. And it represents the Father. The Father was. He just was. He wasn't created. He just was. And He still is. He is Father alone. Hear me. Did you know the first word in the Bible that Moses received from heaven 
from the Father doesn't begin with Aleph because God already was. It begins with the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. In the beginning, it's the word Bereshit. Starts with the bait or the bet. The second letter. Because God is Aleph. God is first. God is foremost. God is before all, above all. I am the Lord thy God. I am is the Aleph. He's I am. He didn't need us, but he wanted us. He desired us. So he sent us forth out of his heart to become the sons of God. I will prepare him. Moses says, because he delivered me out of my sin, out of our trespasses, out of our bondage, out of our disobedience, out of our rebellion. That's how they ended up in Egypt. You realize that? Because they rebelled against God for 400 years. Because they, would, they refused to be a slave of God. They became a slave of men. A slave to sin. A slave under the oppression of this world. But God in his great mercy brought them out. God in his great love and mercy brought us out. But why did he bring you out? To be built together, what? A habitation. An eternal dwelling place. The house of God. Not individually, corporately together. Built it together. What was disjointed being put back into proper alignment. Into proper joining together. He is my God. And I will prepare him an habitation. My Father's God. yod heh vav heh Yahweh. Before anything was, He is. That's my Father. He is. And I will exalt Him. The Lord is His name. The Lord is His name. The Lord is His name. That word habitation in Hebrew is 5115. When you add that up, God knew what it was going to be numbered in the Strongs. It equals 12. Because it's only through the habitation being built together as a habitation unto our God. That we'll see the fullness of his government manifest on earth as it is in heaven. You have a measure of authority as a believer. And the church has operated in that for 2,000 years. But there's something greater that God wants to do in this hour. It goes beyond your personal authority as a believer. It's the authority of Yahweh. The full authority of our Father being set upon a people that have built it together. So don't be surprised if the enemy tries to divide because that's his strategy. In the very beginning, that's what sin does. That's the nature of sin is to divide. <laughs> Who's the father of sin? Who's the father of division? Who wants to keep us separated? First thing he did was separate his son and daughter from their heavenly father. He's doing the same thing today. His ways, the enemy's ways haven't changed. It's to divide and then conquer. And you know what conquering is? Is keeping you from your full inheritance. Getting you to compromise or go against the promise. Calm against the promise. And to settle for just a small portion. 
to settle for the crumbs instead of the whole loaf of bread. Hmm. If he can get Christians to settle for less, he's conquered them. Because until we stop settling for less, we will not see the fullness of his government, the fullness of his kingdom, the demonstration of the power and spirit. Because there are prerequisites, there are requirements, there is a cost that the fullness of God dwell in us bodily. Will we pay the price? What's the price? You got to give up your life. You got to lose your life. You have to give up your rights. You have to give up your will. This word habitation in Greek mm, is a noon, a vav, and a hay. The noon is a letter from Mashiach or Messiah, Savior. Redeemer, restorer. So Gematria is 50. Because Jesus is our Jubilee. Jesus is the restorer. You want everything to be restored to you? You want full restoration? You want the fullness of the kingdom in your life? The full reign of the king in your life? You have to surrender to Mashiach, Messiah. The son of God. That's when you really become the sons of God. And the Vav. Connection. So Messiah connects us back to what? Heaven. The hay. The open heaven. Back to the Father. Through the Son. All things are restored to the Father. Through the sons. All restoration will come for the Father. We, being fully restored, can restore all things to our Father. That's the responsibility. That's the mandate on us as a church. What? To bring Him glory. To give it back to him. Just as the first son in the garden. Squandered away. What was the father's. He let the enemy steal. All that was the father's. That he had given to the son. And now through the son. And the sons. All that was lost. Will be restored back to the father. It's not ours. We're supposed to take it back and give it to the Father. It's called trading. It's called giving. <laughs> giving it all to Him because it all is His. I want to bless my Father. I want to honor my Father. I want to obey my Father. Oh. It's his kingdom. It's his kingdom. Through the Son, we're connected back. Hey means open heaven, it means full redemption, grace, increase, multiplying, the full redemption of the sons. To give back to the Father the fullness of his kingdom. All that was lost. All that was traded away. Do you understand when we compromise? When we refuse? When we let the enemy divide us? When we refuse to be united? You are trading away the fullness of your inheritance. You're giving it to the enemy. You're allowing him to steal it from you no different than Adam in the garden I want to give the lamb 
his full reward. I want to give the kingdom back to my father. I want his heart to be fully filled. Fully restored. As it was in the beginning. So shall it be in the end. I want my life to be a picture of full redemption for those that are following me. How about you? That word habitation comes from a primitive root that means to rest. To rest at home. To come home and to be at rest in the Father's house. That's what it means. It's just in the Strong's Dictionary. It's the idea of beauty. To celebrate with praises. To keep at home. To prepare an habitation. 5115. Which is 12. Which is also... Five, five, double grace, double portion. Eleven is awakening, power, resurrection. There's grace to bring you into the kingdom. And there's grace to bring the fullness of the kingdom in you. For full redemption. There was the son. And there's the sons. And then between the five, one, one, five is the great awakening. When the Son, through the Son, we are fully awakened, fully become aware of the promises, the destiny, our mandate, our purpose, why we exist. To bring the full redemption, just like the first Son, the full restoration of all things. And they give the kingdom Take authority and dominion over this realm, all of creation, to then bring it and give it back to the Father in heaven. That's why you're here. The root word mean is nava, which means the abode. The abode of the shepherds or the flocks, the pasture, the meadow, the dwelling, the abiding, the habitation. The home of God. The pleasant place. His habitation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. End of story. <laughs> As a whole, the body of Christ is very weak. Very weak in faith. We're really weak in discernment. Most people can't discern between the deceiving and dividing of the enemy and the leading and the guiding of the Spirit. We can't discern what's the enemy and what's God. We're deceived. I don't want to be deceived. I want to be fully enlightened. How about you? I don't want to be blinded anymore. I don't want to be blindsided by the enemy anymore. I want to walk in the light as he is in the light. I want the light in me not to be darkness, but to be the full light, the full enlightenment, the full expression of the Father through a son. Stand up with me. We're going to pray. <sighs> Father, we ask you for an increase in the measure of the spirit of discernment in our lives. Would you show us, make us fully aware, enlighten us, Lord, where the enemy is actually the author to bring 
Division and deception. Deception's goal is to divide you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that and only that shall he reap. But Father, open our eyes to see, to be fully enlightened, to know the leading and the guiding of your hand, your spirit in our life. Show us, Father. Instruct us, Lord. Mature us past the place of offendability, of being offended. Mature us, Lord, to that place of perfect love. Offense is based in fear. And its purpose is to divide you, to separate you from the Father and from His body from your brothers and sisters. It expresses itself in many ways. Lord, we ask for the full restoration and the full redemption as your sons and daughters. Father, I want to be builded together. Build it together to make up that holy habitation. The place of the fullness of your power and spirit. The fullness of your glory. The fullness of heaven on earth. Hmm. No more compromise. No more dividing. Full restoration of all things. Father, help us, guide us, equip us, strip us, humble us, so that we can be joined together as one in spirit and truth. As we were praying for um, the fullness, and yes, no, God shows me things as that I'm going to understand. So I saw a sock hanging on the mantle, and we're praying fullness. And the next next thing I saw was the Christmas stocking just overflowing, overflowing with the fullness. Like I said, you have to do the goofy visions like I have. And now Don wants to talk to you about the gas. He has gas. <laughs> Now let me add to that. Now y'all got to go through the whole thing and edit that part out. Anyway. So she saw what? A Christmas stocking. Do you know what Christmas means? Christ Mass. Christ meeting. The church meeting together, being built together is Christ meeting. It's not a Mass like... It's meeting Christ. Huh? More. Ooh, I like that. More of him. <laughs> More of him. Yeah. He's speaking this morning. I mean, I just got this message during the worship. Anybody else got anything they want to add or two cents? Don't take a cheap shot at me, though. <laughs> John 1 16 and of his fullness have all we received grace for grace I've been, I've been thinking about them same scriptures pastor especially the bidding builded together really been on my heart the last few days hallelujah and I believe we have a responsibility to help bring the other Christians into the fold that are being divisive and those that aren't saved yet <laughs> amen Yep, it's only gonna. It's by His grace, grace to grace. Okay. Amen. You can turn it.